And now to the murky world of cyber criminals. Digital currencies like Bitcoin were hailed as the future beyond the world of paper currency. But the shutdown by U.S. authorities of digital currency trader Liberty Reserve for money laundering has sent massive ripples through the industry, raising big questions about the future of the likes of Bitcoin. On the virtual money trail, money laundering expert and author of The Laundryman, Jeffrey Robinson, joined me earlier from New York. Jeffrey Robinson, welcome to the programme. Thank you. Glad to be here. Now, seven years, 55 million transactions, I hear. Why did it take so long to prosecute these fellas? Well, it, putting a case together of this magnitude takes a long time. You have to understand, Badovsky, who's a Ukraine-born American citizen, was busted here in New York in 2006 for running a, uh, an unlicensed remitter, for doing the same thing without a license. Uh, he was sentenced to five years in prison, was somehow that was reduced to five years on parole. He jumped parole, so he's a fugitive from justice, went to Costa Rica, gave up his American citizenship, and became a Costa Rican. He then started putting this whole business together. The feds were on to him. They watched him. They needed to see what he was doing. They needed to get people inside. They needed to, to, to launder some of their own money, to, to have a money trail. Regulators say they're not going to go after synthetic currencies. But I'm wondering, is time running out for Bitcoin? Oh, Bitcoin's got to be very, very worried. Uh, the problem is not the digital currency or the concept of digital currency. It's what you can do with it and the illegal acts that can take place. Now, what LR was doing was basically running a PayPal for crooks. Uh, you, would, you would buy in, you'd buy your LRs, these, these, this digital currency, and you could then use that to buy pornography uh, so that the pornographic website didn't know who you were, didn't know where the money was coming from. They just got their money. They were happy. But there was no record of you buying the pornography. Or if you were a, an arms dealer, you could buy illegal weapons by transferring the LRs, or you could buy your drugs. And there are websites uh, that are selling uh, illegal narcotics, and you can use the digital currency to do that. That's what's so worrying about this. And what's so worrying about Liberty Reserve is that they set this up specifically to provide these financial services for people wanting to do illegal acts. So could Bitcoin be shut down? Well, Bitcoin is going to have to comply with all of the various banking laws around the world and the money laundering statutes. So if Bitcoin is moving money illegally for an arms dealer, uh, they could be in trouble. Bitcoin will have to know who their customers are. And that sets up the immediate contrast between digital currency and the, the, the secrecy provided with digital currency. And the money laundering laws would say, no, 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 you can't be secret. They have a real problem. In Australia, we've got Westpac Bank caught up in the scandal. Should it be worried? You better believe they are. Banks should be knowing their customers. That's what the law says they should be doing. And the fact that they're taking money, uh, no matter how it comes into the bank, is no excuse that, well, we, we know that it came from this guy and he's our client. No, no, no. You have to know where he's getting the money from. It's no longer good enough just to KYC, as they say, to know your customer. You now have to know your customer's customers and the people who are providing funds for him. And if your customer is an offshore shell company, you better know who the beneficial owner of that shell company is and the beneficial owner of that money, or you're in violation of the money laundering laws. Well, there must be an awful lot of cross-criminals at the moment. Where, where are they going to put their money now? There's mention of this organisation called Web Money, based in Russia. Uh, yes. Where are they going to go now? They're going to find another loophole and somebody willing to violate the law to provide them with the service. Uh, they may also turn to Mr. Badovsky and say, we want our money back. Uh, he's now in the protection of the federal authorities being extradited from Spain to the United States. Uh, otherwise, he probably would have his legs broken very quickly. Jeffrey Robinson, how did criminals come to trust Liberty Reserve? Well, understand that they, they, they're always looking for ways of doing uh, the money laundering that they need to do. They've got cash, they've got, uh, they've got money they need to, to, to reinvest in their criminal activity, and they don't want to go through the normal banking activities because most banks will say, uh, you can't just deposit this cash, and no, we're not going to send a wire to some arms dealer. So they're always looking for ways of avoiding scrutiny. Uh, there are plenty of ways of doing it. Uh, they, they found Liberty Reserve, they trusted it because it worked for a while. Uh, in many cases, what criminals do is they say, we're going to milk this system until it stops, and whatever we lose will just be the cost of doing business. But they're still not pleased with the cost of doing business. They get very grumpy because they have no sense of humor. 
Now, tax havens are always spoken about as the area to crack down on. You've been writing books on organised crime and dirty money for decades. You don't see that as the main problem. Uh, the problem with the, the tax havens, and I've just been speaking, for example, to the government in Antigua, where they're saying, you know, but we, we welcome people if they want to buy a shell company and put their money here. And if they're evading taxes, then that has to do with the loopholes back in the United States or in England or in Australia. So if there are tax loopholes with, which let you buy a shell company and move your property rights to the shell company in Antigua and then put the profits there or transfer price uh, so that the profits for your import-export business in Australia are really in a low-tax zone like the Caymans, that's the problem in, in Canberra and Washington and London and Paris for allowing these tax loopholes to exist. You want to end that problem, just close the tax loopholes. The fact that the, the islands will then, at times, help you hide money, that's a different story. And in the case of, um, of tax evasion, yeah, then there is, a, there is a price to pay. But tax avoidance is a homegrown problem in the capital with tax loopholes. That can be solved at home. Liberty Reserve is just the latest in the big bank failures which have been involving fraud. Uh, isn't this the first big one with criminal charges? Well, no. HSBC was done for money laundering, and, and that got all wrapped up in, uh, in Mexican uh, drug money and, and gun running. And, and bizarrely, no one has yet gone to prison for that. I don't understand it, frankly. I really don't. Uh, their ING got busted. Uh, there have been... Uh, there was the, the uh, Barclays LIBOR scandal in Britain. Nobody's gotten busted. Barclays has now been involved in the LR thing because money has shown up. Badovsky's money has shown up in a Barclays account in Spain. Uh, I think that until you start putting bankers in jail, bankers will take advantage. The funny thing about orange jumpsuits, when you have a number across the chest, it focuses people's attention. Jeffrey Robinson, it's been great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. A pleasure.